not him, not Fowles, not Falano, Falano, none of us were ever briefed All right. on Bobrovsky's matter. So, in this video, we'll be talking about very dark black man and Femi Falano's uh, family. I'm talking about all the representatives of Femi Falano from um, Folari, which is Fals the Bad Guy, and his father, Femi Falano, um, wife of uh, Femi Falano, a lawyer, and um, daughter. She is the one that um, actually spoke at the beginning of this video. And what she said um, has set some kind of a tone um, to this um, whole um, debacle. In fact, um, this Bob Risky thing, EFCC, and the Nigeria Correctional um, Service, um, plus, plus, plus the, the, the whole uh, bribery thing. It's becoming serious. So, this is what she said, and I'm going to quickly read, and we'll be listening to more. We'll be listening to more. She said, my parents and our firm, Falano and Falano, have been applying for presidential pardons for Nigerians absolutely free way before a lot of you were born or before you could talk. Slide 1 is from 2016 and slide 2 is from 2022. It's crazy that some Nigerians act like they can't read or think for themselves. It's unfortunate. It's even crazier that all it takes is for a ridiculous character like very dark man to accuse my dad and files of bribery, corruption, and perversion of the course of justice. And you suddenly forgot who they are and what they stand for. For him to have the audacity to go as far as even accusing files of being homosexual and having an affair with Bob Risky is wild. The fact that some of you actually believe it is what is blowing my mind. For the record, anyone can write the president to request a pardon for any convicted person in Nigeria. You don't even need to be a lawyer to apply for a pardon. That said, Bob Risky never approached anyone in my family or our firm for a presidential pardon. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, this matter is deep. It is deep and um, it is going to go um, to the court according to what she's saying. Uh, what she said, uh, one, my dad has never met or talked to Bob Risky, whether directly or via a proxy. Two, Bob Risky reached out to files the same way he reached out to many other celebrities asking for money. The reason he gave was so that he afford to stay in the VIP section of prison. He never, ever, ever, ever discussed a presidential pardon with him. He said he was reaching out from prison. Files had no reason to believe otherwise. Three, do you really think my dad or Files need Bob's money? For what? Seeing as you refuse to do the needful, very dark black man, see you in court. Ladies and gentlemen, can you see that this is deep? But before proceed for that, please like and share, tap on the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. Question that I'll be asking first will be your reactions to this when you first heard the story. Your reaction first as sister to Files, the bad guy, and daughter to uh, your father, of course, uh, Femi Falano, and of course, as a lawyer with Falano and Falano. Um, I think my initial reaction was um, obviously not to take it seriously because. Unfortunately, the way social media works, people say things, a lot of people say things. And a lot of times, people say things that aren't true, that they're saying for clout, for attention. And so I just, I was like, nobody's going to believe this. But then, um, you know, because also this very dark man fellow has, he's always, you know, um, notoriously saying things, Sometimes true, sometimes not. So I was like, I think people know this guy is notorious. I don't think anybody's really going to believe this, you know. But, um, you know, the more it played out, the more bizarre it got. And, you know, people saying all sorts of just outlandish, crazy things. 
And, you know, the questions that I had for people, it's not, it's not rocket science, right? Um, this person claiming that, first of all, what was on the voice note that Barry Dachman was playing and what he was saying and insinuating are different things. Because the supposed audio recording that obviously was illegally obtained by the um, you know, Bob Risky, obviously asking this person for money, saying that, oh, I need so and so amount of money because I've been told that, you know, the only way to get out of this ruckus is to get a presidential pardon. Before I go on, I need to state categorically that you don't need to pay any presidential pardon. Pardons can be applied for. You don't even have to be a lawyer to apply for a pardon, by the way. Anybody can apply to the president for a pardon. It's not something you need to pay money for. But we know because, again, Bobrisky released a list of people he called to ask for money. So we know that he called several people to ask for money. Um, you know, he told them he needed, he told some people he needed money to stay in a more, um, what's the word, the VIP portion of the prison. Obviously, he's telling this person on the, you know, recording that, oh, I need the money to pay the Ministry of Justice so that my case can be fast-tracked to get my presidential pardon. So now to go from that to what very dark man was saying, which is that, oh, the money that was paid was to Femi Falano and that Faust was the one who helped Bob Risky speak to Femi Falano and ask for that money for the presidential pardon. We're now talking about completely different scenarios here. And then he takes it as far as saying that, oh, um, are Fowles and Bob Risky involved? Are they lovers? We're just varying completely off track. Now back to the recording. You know, if we're saying, we're looking at what was on that recording, there's an allegation that, you know, EFCC took money to reduce your charge. Then there's the allegation that you were going to pay somebody in the Ministry of Justice to make sure that your application for the presidential pardon is fast-tracked. And then we're now talking about what Very Darkman said, which is that, oh, um, Fowles reached out to Bobrisky, helped him organize this and this and that. It's a whole mess, a lot of allegations, and... When you are, you know, throwing around these kind of allegations, you have to be, you have to have evidence. And I would think any reasonable person, knowing that there are laws against defamation, before coming on the internet to say, oh, this person said this and this and this, or did this, or fast-tracked this, or helped this person achieve this, before saying all that, I would believe that you would have hard proof or evidence before you do something like that. But of course, not everybody thinks things through before they do them right. So now, I mean, as you know, um, Files, both Files and, you know, my dad have come out to say, first, my dad has said, I never spoke to Bob Risky. I have never spoken to Bob Risky. I, I barely know who Bob Risky is. You know, I just know that he's some social media personality that you people are talking about. I have no idea who Bob Risky is. I never spoke to him. Nobody, you know, spoke to him on my behalf, not by proxy, not directly, no communication with this guy. Secondly, Faust said, I heard from Bob Ruski, but it was to collect, to ask for three million naira from me to be placed in the VIP section of prison. I had no idea that Bob Ruski was trying to pay for a presidential pardon. He never discussed that with me. So you see that we are, you know, the issues are completely different. And so you are, we are now in defamation territory because we heard the portions of the voice notes that Barry Darkman played and what he said, two different things. All right, yep. Let, let's Why be, are you defaming people? 
All right, we have a video. I I'm hoping that we have the correct one this time. Let's quickly take a look at what was said in that video, and we'll come back to the conversation regarding Falari Falano, a.k.a. Falls the Bad Guy, and your father, uh, Femi Falano. I had to call Eli Lake because there's nobody for me to call. Eli gave me, uh, gave me one, uh, two million, the balance of two million. So now the, so I'm supposed to come out in, um, I'm supposed to come out in what's it called, ending of July next month. Okay. Twenty nine. Okay. His father is a is a son, so first reach out to me, his father spoke to me, his father said, we can apply for pardon. Um, this is not really the full video. I, I remember that at some point uh, he had said something in line with asking, you know, why Files was in a way maybe supporting him and saying something in the line of Files' song. Uh, that's, of course, uh, quoting the line where he talked about people criticizing homosexuals. Uh, so he, so the, some of the reactions that we've seen to that is people saying that he did not outrightly call him that and he did not outrightly say that they had a thing. So uh, talk to us about your claims, what Falano and Falano is asking. You've asked for a retraction of that statement and you've asked for an apology, which... Uh, it doesn't seem like you'll be getting. So talk to us about the defamation aspect to it and what the next steps are, seeing as there might not be any apology. I mean, again, you know, speaking about the, the defamation, he clearly said, you know, our files and Bobruski involved, you know, we don't have all day to dissect the video, but if anybody has time, go on the internet, the video is there. He said at some point in the video, Fals and Bobruski involved. And then he quoted the portion of Fals' song where Fals talks about persecuting homosexual people. And he said, oh, is this why you released that song? You know, what are Fals and Bobruski doing together? Are they involved? So there's no, um, th there's no confusion as to whether he insinuated that or not. Now, um, you know, we wrote him gave him the opportunity to retract the statement and apologize. Um, instead of apologizing, he um, came back online, did a video saying, oh, um, I did not, um, oh, I could, I, I would, I could never insult him. Um, um, first of all, on previous, on his previous videos, he, you know, he said, Femme Falano, I'm disappointed in him. How can he be involved in this? Blah, blah, blah. And then he comes back and he's like, oh, I really respect Uncle Femi. I, I can, you know, I can never insult him. Somewhat <laughs> doubling down, but also not apologizing. You know, it wouldn't have cost you anything to say, okay, maybe I got a bit carried away. Um, I didn't get my facts right. And I didn't mean for this to, you know, to cause all this ruckus. I'm sorry. Two seconds would have cost you to do that. But of course, you know, you're chasing clouds, you're trying to maintain, you know, a persona, you want the attention, that's okay. Obviously, the next steps that we're looking at is, you know, going to court, because at the end of the day, people work really hard to build their reputations, and you cannot just wake up one day and decide, because, yeah. you know, you think you're popular on the internet, you are going to come and throw all that hard work away. All just right, kind of hold on. Um, there's so many, um, so many questions here. Um, neither you nor myself nor, um, you know, Mr. Dotson sitting with you in the studio can, you know, confirm whether or not, you know, Bobruski was in prison. But, I mean, if people visited him in, pre in prison and if the corrections officers have records of him actually being in prison seven his time, have we, you know, considered the possibility that this is just one of those cases of people, you know, saying things for clout, lying for clout? Um, I, I'm almost certain that all the things he said on that call, assuming, again, we can't even, you know, verify whether, you know, that phone call happened or didn't happen, right? Because we weren't there. Yeah, but and he's not even as, denying the phone call. That's the interesting thing. He's not even denying the, you know, the phone call. Well, apparently, you know, that, that, that had, apparently, he had released um, a statement um, saying that um, 
that wasn't him on the call. Um, and I think he eventually took this down, but I did see a screenshot of him saying that was not him on the call. Um, but even if it was him on the call, um, he was on that call to ask for money. One, two, um, we know how these characters, especially these social media characters, we know how some of them can be. They say things that are not true. They say things because they are trying to, you know, get a certain response from you. They say things because they want you to do something for them. He was obviously, you know, trying to paint a picture of, oh, you know, these people are helping me with this, so give me this amount of money. He published a whole list of the people that he got money from when he was in prison because he was calling, I, I, I bet you that he probably did not call less than 100 people. He was calling people, and I spoke to a few people who said, oh, yeah, he called me, said he needed money, you know, legal assistance, this, um, help to maintain himself in prison, that. And some people sent him money. So I'm sure he was on that call to get money. And I'm sure the, some of the things that were said on that call, I know for a fact that some of the stuff said on that call are just not true. For example, at no point did Files speak to his father about Bobrowski or a pardon. It just didn't happen. Yeah, so but, but we also, also, also for like, I mean, one mm -hmm. of the things that was a little confusing was, you know, who initiated the call? Was it Files who, or Falarin rather, who initiated the call? Or was it, you know, Idris Okunaye? No, Bob Risky reached out to Faust saying that, um, I would like to speak to you, I need help. Okay. And he assumed he needed legal assistance or something, you know. So he said, okay, how can I help you? Like, what's going on? I think he was, he, he called, Bob Risky then called, because um, cause he must have sent a message saying, oh, please, um, I need to talk to you, I'm trying to reach you or whatever. And then Bob Risky called him and he said, oh, um, please, oh, I'm trying to raise money um, so that I can stay in a more conducive part of the prison. Right. You know. And yeah. just to, you know, finally That's clarify, what... even though we have recognized that everyone is entitled to legal representation, in this case, uh, you're confirming that your father, Femi Falano, was not in any way representing Bob Risky. Not, not him, not Faust. Not Falano and Falano, none of us were ever briefed All right. on Bobrovsky's matter. Welcome back. We'll be listening to more. In this um, case of a um, very dark black man and the Falano, Falano, um, because as it is, um, it, it seems a very dark black man will be facing the Falanos. And since it has to do with their integrity, they will want to go all the way to make sure that they clear their names. I'm talking about Father Femi Falano and Father the bad guy for Larry Falano, who is also a lawyer apart from uh, music that he does. Now, they claim that very dark black man during the broadcast where he played Bob Risky's um, audio call with the guy in the U.S., he casted as passion. He also created this innuendo. He, he created it and um, he hinted at um, Faz being homosexual, having a form of um, inordinate relationship with Bob Brisky. And he also said that he's disappointed that Femi Falano, he never expected that Femi Falano was going to do what he did. He made it appear as if, personally to himself, he believed in that audio recording without thought of um, Bob Risky creating this whole scenario, uh, you know, painting this picture on that call to probably extort some money from the dude that he was uh, talking to. After all, um, we are hearing of a um, certain kind of... Uh, inordinate relationship also um, coming from that dude also you know we don't really know what and what it's a terrible terrible situation now Bobrisky is in a fix yeah because it's either Bobrisky will be going back to prison to serve because he didn't serve or Bobrisky will be charging uh, the federal government if he wins 
saying the system is what I took advantage of, or Bobrisky will have to tell the world that this audio recording is true, but I was just trying to extort money from the dude because I needed money, I was broke, I was empty, or Bobrisky, as he had uh, put on his social media handle that that is not his audio that is not his voice it's a fake one people should disregard it that a very dark black man is simply seeking for um, fame and popularity and relevance and that is an empty person is trying to make money is trying to draw traffic on his uh, social media handles and that uh, none of those things are true now files destroyed all that bob risky um, said by actually saying I spoke with Bobrisky, but I did not call Bobrisky as Bobrisky claimed. I never called Bobrisky for nothing. Bobrisky actually reached out to me and as a legal rep, I felt you might need some uh, form or kind of uh, legal uh, suggestion, service, advice and all of that. So that is basically what um, I was hoping he needed. Not until he started asking for three million naira, and um, he has been calling on several celebrities to help him with the three million. This is the same Bobrisky who um, claims he lives in a house where um, a lot of uh, expensive uh, items are. He said the um, apartment that he lives is four hundred million naira, and uh, he has this extremely expensive uh, um, SUV which we've come to find out does not belong to him and that it was rented it was actually given to him by one of those uh, dealers just to pepper people and make people believe that his life is smooth his life is sweet uh, and this is the exact that uh, the ESTC had asked Bobrisky where are you getting money from you are into money laundry if not and <laughs> this is where the 50 million naira thing came into it the Bobrisky pay or he did not pay anyway let us go slowly. Let us hear from very dark black man. This case is serious. Um, so I'm just waking up now and then I open my Instagram. The first thing I saw is a post on gossip meal from Femi Falano's daughter, Fal sister, where she said, seeing you have refused to do the needful, see you in court. My dad, Femi Falano, never met Bobrisky. We don't need this money. Bobrisky only called my brother Faus to beg for to beg him for money to be moved to VIP cell. My sister, this thing you just posted now is what would have been posted earlier, so that we can all join hand and face the corruption that was revealed. You understand? It's amazing how people went from corruption and people are coming for me that exposed the corruption. You understand? It's just crazy, you know. A recording that exposed a lot of atrocities that might have been going on for a long time that we just discovered. Do you understand? Imagine Bob Risky on a call saying that he paid 15 million naira to EFCC to drop the money laundry charges. That is a big, that is, that should be disturbing to all Nigerians for crying out loud. Imagine Bob Risky saying that instead of taking him to the prison, one godfather called that they should give him an apartment outside the prison. That is disturbing and worrisome. You understand? To think that some people that we thought were persecuted are the people they are outside chilling. Do you understand? To think, are people even understanding the problem that inside that thing that was released? But instead of us joining out to fight this corruption against these agents or this agency that have partook in a corruption, everybody's going, you are coming for me. You understand? Because he said, okay, uh, your father's name was mentioned. Was your father's name not in the recording? Let me choose Femi Falano's name for the recording. Let me choose Fao's name for the recording. You understand? The only thing I said, I said, if their name, if this turns out to be true, I will not have any more respect for them. You understand? If, and I even went on to say that I refuse to believe. I refuse to believe. Which I talk where they did. Next thing, files go drop a letter. Say, if I know retract, retract what? Now me put your name there. What did I say there? You understand? Now you say you want to take me go court. There's no problem. There's no problem. Ah, yes, give or take. If you're too bad, you lock me up for, for six months. If it's too bad, say, if you lock me up for one year, you understand? I don't know what you people wanted. You people wanted me to play the voice note and remove Uncle Femi Falano's name and Fal's name. What kind of human being would I be? 
You understand? Which kind of justice I'll say I won't find not to say even the person where people will be say I like their name no go did there. Who am I? I am not an hypocrite. You understand? Nigerians, let me even tell you what is funny. You see, since I came on this social media, see, I have an option to make millions of naira and go and sit down. I for don't make 500 million, over 500 million, and I for the chill. You understand? But I sacrifice all those things because I know that there are people that are being oppressed. And I decide to use my platform to speak up on, for those people. Since I came on social media, you know how many people my voice don't help? You know millions of naira when I don't collect for, on social media for people? You know millions of naira when I don't collect behind social media for people? This case now when make I post this record in Seoul, the guy borrowed Bobiski 4 million naira. He sweats. He give Bobiski. So it's time for Bobiski to pay him back. Bobiski starts to deton the guy. To the point where he say, oh yeah, pay me back my money. After Bobiski say, go pay in September. Bobiski say, eh, oh yeah, now if you go, I'll tell people, say me and you kiss, me and you smoosh. I asked the guy thoroughly, the guy saying, swear to God, he never thought Bobiski for in life. That because Bobriski knows, say people know they like a gay thing. Bobriski won't rob something on his body. So I know if he collect him money. Then I step up, asked him, say which evidence you get. He said, God so kind, he was recording everything. Because in the future, Bobriski will go on cheat him. And that was the record that I posted. And Bobriski, um, it was when Bobriski was asking him for that money, Bobriski said all those things. So when you come in my own oh, now, instead of us to join and, and follow the corrupt people that are spoiling Nigeria, you know, they come for me say, because now me post time. Eh? Because now me post time. Tomorrow now you come and say, eh, you the fight, you the fight for human rights. Tomorrow you come and say you are fighting for human rights. You understand? But I don't care. If eventually, if at the end of the day, you not throw me into cell, there's no problem. I swear to God, I am not bothered. You understand? I respect Uncle Femi Falano, and I still respect him. What you people would have done was to remove his name from it. But you people did not even address Bob Risky. You did not say anything about Bob Risky. Bob Risky, at the end of the day, you people actually got on a call together. When I don't move on now to very dark man court case, focus on the thing that really happened. But no, when I come for very dark man, there's no problem. Oh. There's no problem. Like I said, Push come to shove, you lock me for six months. Push come to shove, it can never be more than six months. Oh, I yourself, when I say make I pay fine, oh, now sue me for one big money, do you understand? Then I go start to pay for my own capacity. If you sue me one billion naira now, and the court, by, uh, my lawyer maybe bargain, maybe when I end up for 100 million, I they pay one, one million every month, do you understand? Or I go to pay for 500,000 every month, or I will pay to 200,000 every month, depends on which my, my work give me in a month. I don't have a problem. I go pay. If you are deciding now and I won't turn the case, go. I don't have a problem. I will pay. But I will not come back and come and say uh, this thing because of fear. I fear nobody. Now only God I fear. There is no escaping for Bobriski on this matter. But as it is right now, it is clear that the Falanos are ready to go all the way. Like I told you at the beginning of this um, broadcast, they are ready. They are ready. They are ready to go all the way. They will not allow anybody soil their dream, particularly if they are innocent. And even if they are allegedly involved in whatever it is, they still want to make sure that people do not see them in that light, obviously. And talking about money, this person does not need this person's money. This person does not need this person's money. I'm very sure that uh, a rich man started acquiring money little by little, little by little, even if it came in a bulk. It's still in tranches, you know what I mean? And that is how people become rich. Today, 10 million. Tomorrow, 150 million. The next, half a million, um, half a billion. And like that, that's how they acquire money. And at times, some people get that big bombshell money at once. They said Femi Falano is rich. Obviously, he will be rich. He will be very rich. So, um, Very Dark Black Man is also getting... No bold is saying he is not afraid. He might be afraid, but he's still showing that um, outward appearance of being brave and he's ready to go all the way. After all, it's the court. He talked about uh, money, money, money. I will pay according to my income. Hmm. Yes, he has spoken. Obviously, he's saying that he knows that this case might go in favor of the Falanos, and if it does, he will pay according to how much he has. Now, imagine you have two or three cases that you have to pay all your life. What kind of life would that be to you? 
I mean, you are working, you are doing your thing to build your life. Rather, you are using it to pay debt because you opened your mouth to speak. I think he has to apply a bit of wisdom. You cannot uh, continue to say, uh, you cannot stop me from talking. Um, I have to keep talking. And if you take me to court and if I'm, if I'm hard to pay, I will be paying one, one million. No, it doesn't make sense that way. You have to get better. You have to become better in what you do so as to make sure that you don't incur. In fact, you should be hoping that if anyone is to drag you to court, they end up paying. That's how to act smart. So, very dark man, this is what Bobrisky wrote. Um, Bobrisky, like I told you, is rattled up. He wrote, very dark man, all your emotional blackmail won't work this time around. You think I am weak? Just because I choose to calm down doesn't mean I am scared of you. Nobody can send all my help away from me. I repeat, you can't manipulate lies upon lies to send all my help away from me because everybody doesn't have evil art. So people are still amazing, meaning Bob Riskin is rattled up. And with this um, um, dude who had uh, given us the update, he is actually the one that got um, the info um, out. He is the one that spoke to Bob Riskin, uh, and <laughs> it's a serious thing. Talking about James Brown also, James Brown had lied that he had gone to see Bob Risky, which we are now getting to see that it's a lie. So, if we look at the chart of Bob Risky, the chart of Bob Risky and that guy, um, you will realize that they had this, uh, I'm talking of the radio guard, they had this kind of inordinate uh, thing. I swear you are looking more beautiful than ever. And if you, you know, when you look at such charts, you, you will realize that... Uh, Bobrisky is into this uh, uh, female, she male, LGBTQ, trans, this and that, scam. And possibly Bobrisky is a full grown, like still a man. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's a terrible thing. Bobrisky is scamming people with this. Uh, my body is now that of a woman. Bobrisky is scamming some men out there. Just the same way women scam men. That's the same thing that Bobrisky, as a man, is coming some men who have inordinate affection. Let's listen more. I suppose Bobrisky was the fact that the Nigerian justice system is messed up. Bobrisky and the Nigerian government lied to Nigerians. You guys put very dark man in prison. He reached Bobrisky town on a carry and go put for apartments. Where AC day, where food day, the guy just did it, they chill. The guy came out, people still dash their money on top. But very dark man will go prison, come out, nobody dash their money. That was very bad. I exposed Bobrisky because our justice system, no day good for Nigeria. No only poor man, they go prison. Rich man go go apartments. It's not supposed to be that way, fam. I'm calling on the Nigerian government to arrest James Brown for deceiving Nigerians, telling us he went to visit Bobrisky in prison. But what's he been going to do for prison? Not to go record song with one of the inmates. But he came and lied to us that he went to visit senior man Bobrisky in prison. That is absolutely wrong. James Brown should be arrested for deceiving Nigerians, for giving us false information. They carry very dark man put for prison. The guy came out. When I see how very dark man did when he came out now, you're going to say the guy actually go to prison. They can't carry Bobrisky put for apartment. Bobrisky came out shining, looking so good. He even added weight. I said, come, he begin to do party, throw party, buy cake of 20 million, do this one, do that one. Somebody that was meant to be in prison, we can do better as a nation. We can't keep condoning corruption. We all need to stand up and speak up. Enough is enough. James Brown should be arrested for giving Nigerians a false information, for deceiving us and making us think Bobrisky was actually in prison. And for those of you saying that I betrayed Bobrisky, I value the sanity of Nigerians more than any friendship. I felt that you guys needed to know the truth. What it vex me, I expose Bobrisky, is the fact that our justice system in Nigeria is messed up. Idris. First of all, let me show, uh, explain the categorization of the prison setup. With the, because 
the prison, which we call now correctional service, has buildings that accommodate convicted criminals and awaiting trials, including condemned criminals. When they enter the prison for the first time, they have to put them on proper recording. Who is this inmate? Where is it to be kept? This man we are discussing today is neither here nor there as a man or a woman to be recognized. Are we going to say he is a man or he is a woman? Now, thank God he openly confessed to the, to the judge that tried her at the magistrate court. How or him? How or him? <laughs> you see, the, the confusion is... is on, I, I, that is where I don't want us to over-celebrate the issue. He is, if, if I explain the, the setting up of the accommodation... Accommodation is for con condemned prisoners, CC, those who have been sentenced to death. They are apart. They should not mingle with other inmates. The second accommodation is convicted inmates who are the owner of the prison because a witty trial has not been tried. The accommodation that is provided for all male. Are they going to bring Idris with a transgender body look to go and sleep in the general cell with general prisoners? That is where it comes in. That the first thing the record will do is to now say, okay, how do we treat this type of woman? She's not a woman, neither a man. Neither fish nor frog. <laughs> so no, that... Eh? Well, she identified as a man. She's a man. That is that's a man. That's a man. That's a man. Nigerian law. The Nigerian law does not. Uh, it's not a man. Not understand the. Uh, he's a transgender. Transsexuality. No, but he. he no, but as a man. A man. Ah. Hey, but, uh, what of our body picture? But the correctional center is a legal entity in Nigeria. Exactly. Ah. So they now look for a way not to disturb because she can cause. Heavy no, 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 no. He, he, he. <laughs> you see now. He identified he. as a man. man. So we'll have to so take let's, let's I'm telling let's... you how the, I was in the prison. I spent 10 years in the prison. Okay. I am not telling you stories. All those stories you are hearing, majority of those who are contributing don't know anything that is going on in the prison. Yeah, but your time was in the 70s. Where that 70s? The time is different I was, now. I, I was in the prison day before yesterday. I was at Kirikiri Maximum. Not for, for he, uh, his problem, but for rec the correctional message you mentioned now, which they are introducing. Now they now say, okay, how do we do it? They now say, okay, let us give him a special place. It is like that in the prison. They call it for protective custody because they will tear him to pieces because of our body of his body look. He looks like a woman. He, he, he moves like a woman. So for her to go to any cell, there are chronic homosexual inmates that are very hungry to go to any length, to tear anybody, even the ones that are not uh, 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 transgender. They, they try to rape what, them. What would they tear? <laughs> Note the publication alleges that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission (EFCC) dropped money laundry charges against Idris Okunaye, also known as Bob Risky, upon collection of the sum of 15 million naira. This house further notes that the publication alleges that the Idris Okunaye, upon conviction for abuse and defacing of the naira by the court, did not serve his time at the Nigeria Correctional Service but was lodged outside the confines of the service. They stopped about the damning allegations against Nigerian critical law enforcement agencies 
of, of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and the Nigerian Correctional Service, established by these ALO chambers to fight correction and incarceration persons convicted of crime for on financial crimes, the committees on reformatory institutions um, join and investigate this matter. There should be a joint committee on financial crimes and reformatory institutions. Thank you. Ah, those against you say nay. That is a bit. Aye. Aye. Those against you say nay. That is a bit. Thank you, Your Excellency, the People's Speaker. My name is Honorable Dr. Patrick Umar. I represent the entire people of Ikorekpene, a Sienudim, a Borokara Fidu constituency. Mr. Speaker, I'm a proud son of Akwaibum State. I rise to move a motion on the urgent need to investigate the disturbing allegation of corruption against the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and the Nigerian Correction Service to serve Nigeria from ridicule. Mr. Speaker, I crave your indulgence to suspend the relevant rules and allow me to take this motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Any second? I represent Anelcha Oshimili, Federal Constituency, and from Delta State. I move to support the motion as urgent, public, important, as moved by my dear colleague. I so move. I so second, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See, but seriously, seriously, but you, know, you don't get any reason to fear. First, the bad guy, first, the bad guy. Even you, you don't do anything bad, you understand? You know, bad if your father had a person back for pardon, you understand? But we just want to know the truth, so that Bobrinsky is still prison, you know, he knows the prison, you understand? I'm, I'm seriously, now the case on the gay head, small, small. Here, I said they not suspend some people. I hear said they not suspend about five to ten people, you understand? When they're in charge of this Bobrinsky case, people will be saying that they suspend, and then collect bribe from Bobrinsky. Carry and go put inside the co hotel. They give a food, they massage him, body, you understand? At least now the thing on the gay head, small, small, you understand? Make on a continue like this, you get. Bobrinsky, another thing, nobody, the jealousy, it's say, eh, eh, I said because of the way that the jealousy, that's why they want to bring you down. Nobody who go jealous man, who go who go jealous man, where carry money go do low shots, carry money go they do breast, do nyash, you understand? Turn yourself from nobody, they, nobody seriously, but risky. Nobody hates you. This is your business, what they do. Me, I even I, I don't go like to I like you, but the thing me say, I they like sincere people, and they like making things they go straight forward, you understand? See, Nigeria, see, every celebrity, why be say when I do something? When I come to do emotional black me, eh, it's because I made this one, it's because I made that one. They want to, nobody want to bring on that. Nobody wanna be some of an wanna be a lorry you understand? I dedicate this up to all of an always I do emotional black me. I dedicate this up to Bob Risky, VDM, Nigeria, all the lawyers, all the people as soon as they judge this case so that when I go do this case where well. if I don't follow this case up, Tom I go fire on you understand. This song now I fall off and I will involved for this case, you understand? You don't see your wrong and I'm an in ya shy or shake bakam or shake bagam or shake bala a coco or go rigo you don't see your wrong and I'm an in ya shy or shake bakam or shake bagam Ori shekpala akuko ori gorigo o bona na wa believe say bob risky no really go prison na na wa no say bob risky really get one godfather and this godfather must be a politician with the fire bob risky yash because yesterday bob risky got a shiva he can't achieve all the posts for instagram people got said all deleting posts because i saw you go show this morning but this is called post for story. Damn pretty. Ah ah. Damn pretty, Ken. For this kind of matter, how they guide you. You they post your picture, they do damn pretty. So more time, you can't unachieve all those posts. All the posts for Instagram can't come back. Now again, Bobriski don't post advert. Bobriski they post advert for this kind of matter, how they grant. You talk, say you no go prison. They sentence you. People will say you go prison. You say now one apartment they carry you go. The matter they grant. They don't even suspend about four big prison uh, officials like this for your matter. You they post adverts. Oh, but look here, eh? but this kid get one big politician. I'll be say, now nah, be the godfather. He be like say, but this kid don't call and say, oh, Bob, tell your deal. See what it happen. No, now go to and say, law for con e bale. The way Tinubu did tell uh, Nigeria when he did campaign. Hello, for coming back. Go relax your mind. Seems you don't know the kind of person I am. Go and on, achieve your post. Do your thing. Forget them. When they finish shouting, they will rest. 
person don't give a brisk assurance before they do all this to so one person don't give a brisk assurance say go nothing they happen i there with you but brisky you and i your godfather where they fire you so where they tell you say go nothing they happen you and i so when i ask go open that prison where you no go you must go to that prison you must go to that prison because i cannot imagine how they go fire for prison uh, officials and Bobiski, they never arrest them. They never arrest them. Make it they talk. I walk up pass. They don't. They don't fire people. They never arrest Bobiski. One person they back up Bobiski, and that person go come as a very soon. Bobiski, they post adverts. If they post, I'm them pretty. Eh? Ah, more. Exactly. What will they tear? What will they tear? What will they tear? Obviously, you know what they are going to tear. They are going to tear the anal. They are going to tear the bomb bomb of Bobiski. They are going to use their bola to, you know, roughen the edges and what Bob Risky is giving or offering to um, certain so-called godfather that um, he claimed that uh, he had, uh, you know, you know, connected with, connected with. So Bob Risky, Bob Risky, Bob Risky did not spend time in prison. If he had, um, some people would have used um, Bob Risky as a meal. Now, this write-up states this, the revelation by the source are in consonance with a 2019 undercover investigation by FIJ founder Fisayo Soyombo, for which he deliberately got himself detained for five days by the police and incarcerated for eight days by the prison, discovering that it was possible to pay money to live in well-furnished apartments inside prisons. Pay to bring in phones, drugs, and sundry outlawed items, strike one's name of the prison records, and even live outside the prison while supposedly serving out a jail term. Although the prison authorities did not allow Bob Risky mingle freely with other inmates, consequently reducing the chances of his eventual disappearance being spotted, the prison official told FIJ about the about one noteworthy incident there was this day one guy was on a video call with his girlfriend he suddenly turned the camera on bob Risky, the official said it was deemed an invasion of bob Risky's privacy so as a punishment he was locked up in his cell for nearly two months the source added as i said it was heavily guarded so there weren't many of such incidents to point out and it was quietly taken away after three weeks <laughs> since Osa released the audio some social media users have been wondering whom james brown another cross-dresser met uh yeah who did he meet with there is a possibility that um, bobriski was brought in whenever they needed to bring bobriski in to just make it appear as if uh, yes bobriski is in prison uh, it could be that Bobriski was in the VIP section of the prison, and it could also be that Bobriski was in a flat. Let's start with this. Let's say Bobriski spent um, one or two weeks or thereabout in that VIP section with that he had paid three million naira for, and um, he was now allowed to go to the flat that he wanted after another huge amount of money was paid. There is a possibility for this. This points to the system that uh, permits or allows uh, this act of foolishness we, we've been talking about this for a long time and many people are beginning to see reasons according to the cleric who spoke just now he talked about that section in the prison that vip section um, he said it is according to the discretion of the warder to decide on certain persons who should be given um, pre, you know, preference a kind of VIP treatment due to their um, status in the society, one, and some other like that of Bobriski. Bobriski, they said he has turned to a transgender. It's transgenderism. <laughs> There's nothing like that anyway. It's tra being a transgender, changing one's physical outlook. Does it uh, amount to any criminal act or is there any punishment attached to it? That's one question. Two, um, in Nigeria, the act of homosexuality is a crime which Bobriski is aware of. Bobriski appears to look like a woman. That's what he is saying. That Bobriski has done some things to his herbs 
uh, his chest area, chest region. He has um, injected some some whatever into it, and uh, his, his behind is, uh, is 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 something that a lot of people do not know. If Bobrisky wore some kind of um, material, some something to make it look like that, or he actually um, injected that part too. We don't know what Bobrisky has done to his front and his back. We are beginning to see the likes of Bobrisky, like James Brown, even though he has not done to the level of um, Bobrisky. Uh, he, 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 he claimed that he went to the prison and he saw Bobrisky there. He took pictures, but without Bobrisky. So, where was Bobrisky? VIP section of the prison, where he had lesser interaction or no interaction at all with the other prison inmate. After all, he has paid to be there. He had access to his phone. He had access to a lot. He, he just could not use his own social media handle so not to create some. But he had access to, to, to use his phone to talk to those that uh, he wants to talk to. So we don't even know at what time, at what moment, but Brisky um, could speak to whoever it is that he spoke to. Uh, I'm definitely thinking that Bob Risky had the, the, the mobile phone um, to contact those. They definitely gave it to him. He said, look, I need my phone so I can call those that will send me money. I have literally spent all my money um, at the EFCC. Um, EFCC, according to Bob Risky, had collected 15 million naira to um, strike off that part of money laundry, which... Uh, a lot of people are beginning to kind of uh, worry about like wait hold on a second does the EFCC do they have the right and um, does the EFCC have the right to strike off um, a case like this is it something that is is it something that is acceptable is it part of um, what they are supposed to is, is it something that is uh, have, have we gone to and um, this level where they can just simply strike. Well, that's deceiving ourselves. Of course, we all know that uh, they do that. Police officers do it. Police officers are simply the people you find in ESCC. They are not different. They are one and the same. And they, they, they do the same. They do always the same, always the same kind of uh, uh, character you always find. So, Bobrisky, what is the way out for Bobrisky? What is the way out for Bobrisky? What is the way out um, for very dark black man? What is the way out for individuals or persons or institution that have been mentioned or named in this whole thing. Um, I, I don't know what you guys uh, are thinking about this whole matter. It is, uh, uh, it, it is serious. It is deep. It is serious and it is deep. And <laughs> I'm kind of thinking that uh, as time goes on, this matter will expand much more than what we think it will expand more and even more and uh, we will eventually arrive where we are expecting to arrive it is not possible for us to accept uh, uh, this constant uh, criminal activities here and there certain people giving some kind of a vip treatment while some people are giving some kind of a rude and crude treatment it is not supposed to be. It is. It is a bad thing. It is not um, accepted. But Brisky should be in the same cell like others. Yes, he should be there. He should uh, be there. I'm not saying that uh, he should be encouraged. Uh, we are not encouraging any act of um, bestiality, brutality, or homosexual act. But according to the cleric, he said these things happen. It exists. It does happen. These things um, happen in. Prisons. These things happen in prisons. Um, <laughs> imagine what would have happened to Bobrisky if Bobrisky had not uh, somehow found a way out of uh, this situation by paying certain people to keep him some, some to give him some um, kind of uh, exclusivity, uh, like uh, being kept somewhere. The thing is this: is it right to pay? That's the question. Is it appropriate to pay for these services? These are the questions that people are asking. Is it right for payment to be done 
is it at the discretion of the you know our system we need to put it in order is it right is there supposed to be payment for these services or not is there supposed to be payment for these services um let not say service it's not really a service it's just the discretion of the judge um, or let's say the the prison warder to decide on i i think the 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 warder should not be the only one that should decide upon this no not at all it should be from the court the court or the lawyer of such a person should and i think that's how it works supposedly that's how it's supposed to work you just don't uh, uh, say this one has no money so let us put him or her where um, certain things will happen to um, that person it is not right i say a very big thank you to those who have taken time to subscribe to this channel and if you're yet to subscribe kindly tap on that subscription button and also the red bell icon so you will be notified whenever videos such as this are uploaded